But there's a broader theory, that the attack was intended to be blamed on Egypt and would therefore draw America into the war and was carried out with the foreknowledge of certain people in Washington. The Liberty's captain had always suspected this was the case. In 1997, at Arlington Cemetery, he broke his 30-year silence. For many years, I had wanted to believe that the attack on the Liberty was pure error. It appears to me that it was not a pure case of mistaken identity. I think that it's about time that the state of Israel and the United States government provide the crew members of the Liberty and the rest of the American people the facts of what happened and why it came about that the Liberty was attacked 30 years ago today. Less than two years later, McGonagall himself would be buried at Arlington. Shortly before he died, he sent an open letter to President Clinton calling for Israel to acknowledge publicly that her armed forces had deliberately attacked the USS Liberty. Captain McGonagall was more than just a captain in the Navy. He was a friend. He was a sailor's captain. Towards the end of his life, McGonagall confided in his old friend, the chief engineer. Captain and I was, was, was real close, and um, every time I'd see him while he was in the hospital, uh, he would cry, and, and uh, he called me a few years, two or three years before he died. Uh, he was going to be in Washington for me to come up there, and I sat in a room with him. We chatted a while, and then he got started telling me that those SOBs really did us in, George. And I said, what are you talking about? McGonagall went on to say that if the Liberty had been sunk with all hands, the blame would naturally fall on Egypt and her Soviet backer. We were guinea pigs to be sunk, and then we could say Egypt and Russia did it. That way the United States could have stepped right in and helped Israel. 